Hi everyone, in this live session, we are going to read the most important math formulas. Most important math formulas, all formulas in this video, in this session. So you can have a quick revision before you go for your exams or test or solve any questions. So we're going to start with exponents. Here it says when you have same base a a h to the power of x times a to the power of y when you have same bases and you have multiplication between them so you add the powers a to the power of x plus y first for example suppose if you have 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 3 you have same base 2 that's multiplication between them so you add the powers 2 to the power of 2 plus 3 is 5 so that's how you do it okay the next one says if you have a to the power of x over y a to the power of x to the power of y power to power so what do you do you multiply the powers x times y for example if you have 2 to the power of 2 whole to the power of 3 so you multiply them 2 times 3 is 6 2 to the power of 6 all right let's see another one when you have same bases all right and this division between them you subtract the powers for example if you have 2 to the power of 2 over 2 to the power of 3 so what do you do same base there's division between them you subtract the powers 2 to the power of 2 minus 3 so that's equal to 2 to the power of negative 1 now you have got an inverse negative exponent so what do you do you take the inverse of that that is 1 over 2 reciprocal of that basically a negative exponent is reciprocal of that now for example a to the power of 0 equals 1 so anything to the power of 0 equals 1 for example 2 to the power of 0 equals 1 100 to the power of 0 equals 1 that's it so if you remember these main laws of exponents you can solve any question now let's go on to another one we have radicals radicals what do you mean by radicals radicals means the root the root which you have is called as radical and this is called the teeny tiny number which is present here is called as index number now you have a base a a to the power of x and you have the same root here whenever you have something like this that equals to a the same base how when a is not equal to zero and x is greater than zero for example now if I take an example for this suppose I have square root square root of 4 and the same exponent 2 2 when you have same exponent and same root you have square root of 4 square is 16 uh, square root of 16 is again you're back to the same base that is equal to 4 so this is equal to this isn't it a is equal to a 4 is equal to 4 square root of 4 square is equal to 4 so that's that's what it means okay now when you have a times b now that's not a number 23 or 52 or 37 nothing like that that's two uh, different numbers 2 times 3 multiplied together have a root of x so you can split them up for example if you have numbers like 2 and 3 multiplied together for example 2 times 3 to the root of 2 so you can write square root of 2 times square root of 3 you can split them up that's it okay so this this was about radicals now let's go you have foil method what do you have in foil method foil is used with you can just remember the word foil here 
if you have two multiplications two parentheses multiplied together in the form of ax plus b times cx plus t so you can use foil method for that that means you multiply the first that is ax and cx that is the first term f then o o for ax times b that is outside ax times d outsides this this was first then you have to multiply the outsides then i i is for insides b times cx and l is the last one you multiply b times d b times d that that you can remember it through foil that's it very simple and easy okay complex fractions whenever you have complex fractions like this so a over b over c over d so you multiply the outsides and the insides like this outsides a times d a times d a d and b times c that's b c so you get a d over b c that's it so whenever you have 2 over 3 over 4 over 5 so you just multiply the insides and the outsides so you get 2 times 5 over 3 times 4 and that's equal to 2 times 5 is 10 3 times 4 is 12 so that's how you multiply the fractions fraction over a fraction that's it okay let's go and find this one. whenever you have exponential function now it is not as uh, exponential it's exponential function whenever you have an exponential function like this y equals to a times b to the power of x where a is not equal to 0 and b is greater than 0 and x is a real number so that's what is it about okay so when you you have some special cases special case formulas which i think most of you remember so what is it let's see if you know that a squared minus b squared okay let me just keep something okay so you have a squared minus b squared that is a minus b times a plus b then you have a squared plus b squared that is equal to a plus b the whole square minus 2ab how can you tell me how because a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab minus uh, a square plus b square minus 2ab. So when you bring 2ab this side, it becomes minus 2ab. Now you have a cube because I, I'll just write it down for you. a plus b whole square equals a square plus 2ab plus b square. So when you bring 2ab this side, it becomes negative. Okay, a cube minus b cube is a minus b times a square plus 2ab minus b square. Easy to remember because this sign will be equal to this. And you have opposite here. Next, a cube minus b cube. You, have, you can also write it as a minus b the whole cube plus 3ab times a minus b. Either way, this is also same, this is also same a cube plus b cube can be written as a plus b times a square minus 2ab plus b square now you have to remember the signs that's it a cube plus b cube also it can be written as a plus b whole cube minus 3ab times a plus b or right. and here we have a square over b square plus b square over a square equals a over b plus b over a the whole square minus 2 now you don't have to remember this you just have to remember this this is very important now here a square is this a over b the whole square and b is b over a the whole square so i'm just going to write that here in place of a i'm going to write a over b the whole square plus 2 a is what a over b times b is what b over a plus b square is b over a the whole square 
the whole squared that is equal to a plus b the whole square so what is my a a over b plus b over a the whole squared so you can even write this as a square over b square plus a a cancel b b cancel you have plus 2 plus b square over a square so this is how you get what is a square over b square plus b square over a square you send to this this side so you have this whole square minus 2 that's what you get all right this were some special case formulas so let's see if i have some more formulas quadratic equation quadratic equation is ax square it is in the form of ax square plus bx plus c so what is a quadratic formula you have to write it's called as quadratic equation because the degree the highest degree is 2 if the degree is 1 the highest degree is 1 it is called as linear equation if the degree is 2 quadratic if the degree is 3 cubic quartic like that quadratic formula is given as whenever it is in this form x and you're finding for x you write it as negative b plus or minus under root of b square minus 4ac over 2a easy very simple let's see what is this b square minus 4ac is called as discriminant now how do you find the roots how many solutions are there so if the discriminant is less than zero there are no real roots if it is equal to zero there is one real root greater than zero there are two real roots now I have something here maybe you already know what it is about this formula for growth and for decay so might be you have guessed right a is principal amount r is rate t is time so where do you find all this when you calculate simple interest compound interest yes and what how do you do that an exponential function so basically you should know what an exponential function is so if an exponential function is defined as a function which is of the form f of x is equal to a times b to the power of x where a and b are constants you have to remember that if b is greater than 1 it is growth function as s increase x increases f of x increases so it is a growth function growth function how x increase f of x increases now if b is less than 1 if b is less than 1 it is a decay function how you can say that it is a decay function because if as x increases here f of x as x suppose x decreases here as x decreases it it's opposite f of x increases so it's a decay, decay function all right so you have to remember these when it is a decay function when it is a growth function when you're when you're calculating simple interest or compound interest okay now <clears throat> let's see <clears throat> there's a work problem how much how much time is taken for him to complete the task in two days if someone does a task in these many days and another one does a task in these many days how many how much time will they take if they do it together so whenever, whenever you have questions like that you can solve it like this what is x here 1 over x plus 1 over y equals to 1 over t that is the time taken x is the amount of time taken by the first person to complete a job and y is the amount of time taken by the second person to complete the job 
and T is the time taken if both do it together. So that's how you solve the work problems. 1 over X plus 1 over Y equals 1 over T. Now you have arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is the difference between two consecutive terms. Like you have A n equals a1 plus n minus 1 into d this is the first term nth term and the difference the common difference all right let's see geometric sequence we have read about arithmetic sequence this is about geometric sequence a geometric sequence is the ratio between two consecutive terms a n equals to a1 into r to the power of n minus 1 so this is the nth term this is the first term, this is the common ratio and n is the number of items or the number of terms. Arithmetic series, now whenever you have series, sum of that series, how will you find? n over 2 times a1 plus a n. a1 is first term, a n is last term and n is number of terms. Similarly for geometric series you have this. So if you remember this, you can solve any questions related to geometry. Now for another formulas, we'll get back to another live session. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye. Take care.